have a musketeer hat, though. Do you? Just, I'm not wearing it, but I have one. Where's it living? Is it at your house? Uh, it's in Toronto right now, um, where we were two years ago shooting the last Resident Evil movie, and at Halloween I dressed up as uh, Athos. Fantastic. Hat, feather, swords, guns, the works. So it only comes out on special occasions? Yeah, well, it doesn't really fit very okay. well, so it has to be when I don't mind looking ridiculous. So the film, so that was a couple of years ago you said you yes. were in the hat. So this film, um, was it, you knew you were doing it then. So was that outfit in preparation for this film? Yes, I was getting myself prepared. Fantastic. Um, so the film's very different to some of the other stuff that you've done with the Resident Evil movies. But uh, in the production notes, you liken it to sci-fi. Do you want to just tell us a bit more about that and how you connect the two together? Well, I think the methodology of making a science fiction movie and a period movie are very, very similar. Um, you know, I, you can't go out on the streets and just shoot. You know, you've got to, every location has to be dressed, carefully chosen, or sets have to be built, every costume has to be built and considered. Um, so, you know, putting together a science fiction movie and putting together a period movie, they have, they really have a lot in common for a filmmaker. Mm. Um, some of the sets are just fantastic, and I know in this day and age a lot of it will be CG, but as a director, were you still flabbergasted when you came in and saw some of these things that the production designers had created? Um, the most flabbergasting things were actually the locations that we shot on. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we obviously did build a lot of big sets. Um, but the truly spectacular stuff in the movie, I feel, are these incredible palaces and castles that we found in Europe, and we were lucky enough to shoot for real. Um, most of them had never been put on film before. Um, so, you know, one of my favorite locations, for example, is the, the long mirrored corridor where Mila and Christoph Waltz are walking and talking. To be able to shoot in something as big and as spectacular as that, is just incredible and in fact the visual effects company that worked on the movie they've had a lot of calls from other studios calling to ask how they did that mm. and you know they've always been very embarrassed to say well actually we didn't do anything there's no visual effects it's all for real yeah amazing the um resident evil was uh, the last film you shot was in 3d this one again 3d um i'm guessing that now you're a 3d fan you're not going to be going back to 2d again and uh, i love 3d i mean i think for certain kinds of films it's incredibly useful I think when you're trying to immerse the audience in a fantastical world, whether it's in Avatar, the world of Pandora, or whether in Musketeers it's the world of 17th century Paris and London, when you're trying to wrap that world around an audience, I think 3D is spectacular. Mm. Um, the cast you've got in the movie is fabulous as well, um, with that blend of comedy but serious when you need it. Um, people like Christoph Waltz who play their part so well. Ha with the cast that you had, what were there some of the highlights that you like to share with us from, from on set that you um, that you experienced at, at the time? Oh my goodness. I mean, it's uh, it was all so much fun. I mean, it's hard for me to pick out individual kind of moments because really everyone was having a great time doing it because I think everyone was really well cast for their roles. Mm -hmm. It was really easy for Christoph to embody Richler, you know, for, for Matthew to be um, Athos. You know, so the cast were having a very good time and I was having an awesome time watching them. Um, I mean, anything, anything with Planchet in it, of course, you know, anything with James, that was always a fun day because he was just so hysterical. You know, the hard thing obviously was for the rest of the cast to keep a straight face. Yeah. So uh, for them, wide shots were awful because the, he would be doing his stuff and they would be trying not to laugh desperately. Um, so that, that was immense fun. And then the other thing that I really enjoyed doing was watching the actors fight, you know, because they, they do all their own fighting in the movie. So when you see the big fight with the Musketeers and the Cardinal Guards, I mean, you've seen the film, I mean, you can see it's really Matthew, Ray, and Luke fighting, mm. uh, with Mila fighting on top of the rooftop. You know, she's really, she's really doing all the big spinning and the twirling in the dress. And all of the, all of the sparks you see when the blades collide, those are all real as well. They're not computer generated or anything. That's, you know, that's what happens when you clash together two large, sharp pieces of metal at 100 miles an hour. So the swords were metal and they, they were... They were real metal swords and the, the actors were really fighting with them. And that, for me, was, it was a pleasure to put that on film. So did you have lots of stunt uh, people that were around to make sure that all the fighting was done? And I mean, the choreography was fantastic in the film. We had um, a very, very talented um, stunt choreographer, Nick Powell, who had done Gladiator and The Last Samurai and also The Born Identity. Um, so really fantastic with fight scenes and amazing with swords. And um, he trained up all of the actors. Logan was the one who spent the most time. He trained for four months. And the others had uh, two or three weeks of very, very intense training. Um, and they became great swordsmen. And I think you can, see the, you can see that in the movie, that these guys, these actors were prepared to do it themselves. And, uh, you know, they got banged up sometimes. But I think the, 
the benefit is, you know, you're not over some stunt double shoulder. You know, you're really watching the actors do it for real. And again, I think that really immerses you in their story. Did you get time to do any sword fighting while you were there? Did you learn anything? You know, I, I loved The Three Musketeers, the book, when I was a kid. I was obsessed with musketeers. I started kind of fighting in the playground with a stick, and I ended up actually uh, joining a fencing team at school. So, you know, I, I'd, already, I'd already developed some fencing skills, okay. but I didn't fight any of the actors. The costume design was something that struck out, you know, came out to me. It was just absolutely amazing. Um, when you saw the, the uh, concept art, you must have been blown away by the costumes design that you saw. But when you actually saw them in the flesh, how, how was it for you? Um, it was fantastic. I mean, it was a long journey on the costumes. Pierre-Yves Guerreau, who designed the costumes for us, I think is a genius. Um, he'd done movies like uh, Perfume beforehand. So he'd done a lot of period films. Um, and we built a lot of kind of real costumes. Um, so it was very closely based on what things really looked like then, but incredibly challenging to build. So every time I saw a finished costume, it was always a relief because I knew how much effort had been put into it. Yeah. Um, the film ends where we can definitely expect another. Um, is there plans already afoot as to whether you'll direct and when we might see that one? I had an awesome time making this movie and I love everyone in it and you know I would like nothing better than to work with them all again. You know, For me though, I, I put all of my energy and effort into the one movie we're making right now. Mm -hmm. So um, for me it's all about making sure an audience kind of come to see the movie and love the film uh, before I even consider the idea of a sequel. Brilliant. I really enjoyed it, so thank you very much for your time today. Thank you. Okay. Nice to meet you. Thanks very much.